welcome to the International Desk. I'm Linda Kincaid. Well, as he begins his first full week as U.S. President, Donald Trump is off and running, pursuing what he calls his America First agenda. Any minute now, Mr. Trump is expected to sign an executive order taking the U.S. out of the Trans-Pacific Partnership. The 12-nation trade deal was a centerpiece of the Obama administration. Earlier, Mr. Trump talked with several CEOs, warning them of tariffs if they transfer jobs abroad and then import products back into the U.S. He promised to make it easier for businesses to stay in America. We think we can cut regulations by 75 percent, maybe more, but by 75 percent. Have, in a certain way, better protections. But when you want to expand your plant, or when Mark wants to come in and build a big, massive plant, or when Dell wants to come in and do something monstrous and special, uh, you're going to have your approvals really fast. The president will also meet with lawmakers, union leaders and workers later today. This, of course, comes after a weekend full of controversy for the new administration. Now, for more, let's bring in CNN's Money's Maggie Lake from New York and CNN politics reporter Tal Copen from Washington. Thanks both for joining us. First to Tal, uh, Donald Trump is expected to sign a number of executive orders today. Just take us through them. Yeah, well, you know, one of the ones we're expecting is about TPP. Uh, keep in mind that for a while, TPP has been sort of effectively dead after Donald Trump ran the election, or won the election, excuse me. He ran on a platform of really backing away from that uh, treaty that, uh, that Barack Obama negotiated, and congressional leaders uh, really read the tea leaves on that one and didn't move on it at all, which sort of effectively killed it. But today, we're expecting Donald Trump to sort of make that official as one of his uh, key first initiatives. Keep in mind that being uh, against many of the free trade deals of his predecessors on, on both sides of the aisle really uh, was a signature piece of his campaign. We're also expecting some executive actions either today or later this week uh, regarding federal workforce uh, freezes, uh, some stuff looking at immigration. So we're really standing by to see what he signs today. All right, stand by for us, Tal. Um, I want to go to Maggie. Um, just looking at the TPP, it was the world's biggest trade deal. What will it mean if the U.S. does withdraw from it? Well, you know, some countries say they're going to continue on and still move forward, but it's going to seriously water down the potential of this if the U.S. is no longer in it with that massive economy. Remember, China wasn't part of it from the very beginning. You've got to wonder what difference it's going to make or how effective it's going to be. But I think, Linda, the other really important thing here is that it seems to be ushering in a new era, one we haven't seen in some time, moving away from the idea of globalization in that meeting with business leaders um, that were watching the tape from um, Donald Trump said um, this is fair trade, not free trade. That's what he's looking for. He believed these big multilateral agreements were job killers. It's a more protectionist tone than we've heard from a U.S. president in decades. And it's left a lot of people scrambling. It's a new world order that we don't fully understand right now. All right. Uh, I just want to bring back uh, Tal right now. Uh, between the meeting this morning with business leaders and the executive order on trade, it does look like Trump is starting to follow through on some of those big campaign promises. Yeah, for sure. You know, we're getting the Donald Trump in many ways that we were promised, right? You know, throughout the transition, we saw him sort of directly engaging with corporate America in a way I'm not sure I have, can recall a president ever doing before, sort of directly uh, going to CEOs and calling them out for deals that have sort of been considered settled, uh, especially when you're talking about defense contractors. So right away, we're seeing this sort of businessman president uh, acting on many of the things he said he would. And, you know, we heard in this meeting he's already talking about, you know, two CEOs directly threatening them with border taxes, which is something he said uh, he's going to use to try to enforce uh, companies staying in America. So very much so, uh, as he campaigned, he is sort of delivering as far as uh, his first actions in office go. And talking about those first actions in office, just uh, back to Maggie uh, for this one. In regards to the reaction on the markets, mm -hmm. what effect do you think these first few, few days and weeks will have on, on U.S. businesses and the markets? People are, are very cautious right now, Linda. I talked to a trader on the floor. He said, listen, we're, we're looking, we're watching. Remember, we had this huge rally uh, from the election on on the hopes that this would really boost the U.S. economy and be business friendly. We were talking about tax cuts and less regulations. We heard about that today, but this 
protectionism, anti-free trade, calling out businesses, threatening them with, with um, you know, tariffs if they don't build in the U.S. That is, these are not policies the business community in general supports. They're also uncomfortable. I have questions about immigration, which they rely on. Uh, so they're really in uncharted territory. Not all of it is business friendly. He may be a businessman president, but these are not uh, issues that are embraced by the entire business community. There is a lot of friction there um, that you have to work through. And I, and when we saw that presser today, we, we said we would have loved to have the camera turn and see the faces of the businessmen as he was sort of threatening them with those tariffs. <laughs> what does he follow through on? What's rhetoric? What turns into policy? His cabinet is made up of more traditional business voices. Do they have a say? And is some of this still a rhetoric aimed at the voters, not so much going to translate into policy? We just don't know yet. So that big rally is still in place, but we haven't been able to move any further for stock markets because there is this very cautious, sort of somewhat worried feeling about there about what exactly this is going to mean for the bottom line. All right. Certainly a lot to watch there. Maggie Lake for us uh, and Tal Copen. Great to have you both with us. Thank you.